Well, hello everybody and welcome back to our weekly Bible study here at King's Revival Church International. My name is Gareth and uh, I'll be sharing the lesson with you today. Well, I just want to say uh, thank you so much for joining in today and uh, I really appreciate you connecting week in and week out and being faithful to the Bible study lessons and if you are here for the first time as well, well you are our VIP, you are our special guest and we just want to give you a very warm welcome today and, and uh, I pray that this lesson will be a blessing to you and that you will be encouraged and that you will be faithful by the end of this lesson. I want to also just acknowledge my pastor, Pastor Dil Kumar. What a blessing he is to me and my family and what an honor it is to just to share the Word of God with you uh, each and every week. And uh, I have been blessed by the time, for the time that I've, uh, you know, studied the Word and prepared the message and it, I've, I've been learning so much um, through, through all of this. And so I just want to thank my pastor and uh, and uh, we really really appreciate you and we love you pastor deal well uh, we've started a series it's called the voice of god and uh, last week i'll i'll recap a little bit on on last week part one and then today i'll share some new insights in part two and my question that i asked you last week was does god speak to every person does he speak to all peoples and uh, my answer is a resounding yes. Yes, he does speak to everyone, but not everyone positions themselves to hear the voice of God or they are not sensitive or they haven't learned to hear uh, the voice of God and to um, uh, know when, when God speaks. And uh, yeah, is why I believe that that is true, that God speaks to all of us because Revelations chapter 3 and verse 20, the Bible says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my, if any man hear my voice. See, it says that if any man or woman for that matter hears my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. And so I, I, when I read that and we've got other scriptures that we're going to look at as well. In the New Testament where Jesus speaks and he, he tells us that uh, he wants to commune with us. He wants to communicate with us. Yes, he, it is his will that none should perish, but that everyone have everlasting life. Uh, it's God's heart that we all be saved. But he, he's a God of communication. And we looked at that last week and we looked at five reasons why. Uh, I believe that God speaks to every person. Five of those reasons and just to uh, quickly recap, number one, it is the nature of God to communicate. In other words, uh, God sp speaks and then he listens. That's who is, he is. You know, when he created the world, when he created um, Adam and Eve, he spoke um, though, them into creation. He used physical words and uh and then he, he communicated with Adam and Eve. They were in relationship with him. They were walking with him in the Garden of Eden on a daily basis. And they would talk. They would commune. Adam and Eve would communicate uh, with each other. That's point number two. We human beings have been created to communicate. So you talk and I listen. And then I talk and then you listen. Sometimes we get that mixed up, right? <laughs> but we've been created to communicate. We're social beings. We're on this planet with uh, uh, billions of, of people and it is in our nature, in our DNA to communicate. God is a God of communication. We're made in His image and we communicate as well. Number three, the third reason why I believe that God speaks to every person is that the Bible gives us a long history of recorded incidents in which God and man communicates very directly and specifically. And I gave a few examples. I'll just mention them by name and not go into too much detail. God spoke to Cain. God spoke to Noah. God spoke to Abraham, Isaac, and, a and uh, uh, Jacob. God spoke through many, many prophets. God spoke through kings. 
um, God spoke to laymen, God spoke to the apostles, but God spoke to Christians. And so uh, we see that God, God is a God of communication. God wants to reveal himself. God wants, to, wants you to know who he is. Amen. And then, then number four, the fourth reason why I believe that God speaks to every person is because Jesus said so. We looked at John 10, 16. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd and, and know my sheep and am known of him. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring and they shall hear my voice. They shall hear my voice and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. It is the heart. It is the intention of Jesus that we hear his voice. Isn't that encouraging? It is, it is his it is his heart, it is his will, it is his desire that we, his children, hear when daddy speaks, when the father speaks to us. Uh, John 18, 37, Thou sayest that I am a king, to this end I was born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice voice heareth my voice hallelujah and so number five point number five is uh jesus said that the holy spirit would speak the truth of god to those who believe in him john 14 16 and 17 i will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not neither knoweth him but ye know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you he will dwell with you he'll be in you he will communicate with you you will know him uh, you will know his voice praise god those that want to hear his voice i'm standing i'm knocking if you open up that door i will sup with you i will communicate with you so yeah we've seen many many scriptures uh, as to uh, why i believe that god still communicates to us today uh, it had the, his will and his plan and his desire and his heart has never changed. In Hebrews it says he's the same yesterday, today and forever. So God is a God of communication and he wants to communicate with us. Now, if you aren't hearing God's voice clearly in your spirit, you may need to do some removing right, of whatever obstacle is in the way. And that's what part two is about today is uh, we're going to look at some of the reasons why uh, we don't hear from God. And I'll start off with reason number one. Some people are afraid to, to hear. You know, some people think that God is, a, is, a, is a, like a, a dad with a stick and he's waiting for you to, to, to mess up or he's waiting for you to make put a foot wrong so that he can beat you on the head and discipline you, you know. And, and so people are afraid. They're afraid to, to, to hear from God. They're afraid of what he's going to say to them. Number two is the second reason why I believe that we, we don't hear God's voice um, clearly is that we, are, we feel unworthy that we, that we can hear from him. So people feel unworthy. We're, we, we feel like we're not good enough. We're not holy enough. We, you know, we've, many people feel that they, that they haven't done enough. To, to hear his voice and to receive from him that it's only it's only for the pastor it's only for the prophet you know not 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 for a a, a, a lowly person like me right and a sinner like me hallelujah no god wants to speak to all peoples and you know what we're saved by grace through faith you know it's the love of god while we were st still yet sinners jesus christ died for us listen uh, no matter how good you are it you know you Actually, we, we're, we're, we're never worthy to hear from God. But the Bible says that we are the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ. It is because of what Jesus accomplished at the cross that we can receive the Father. We can receive the Father only through Jesus Christ. The way to the Father is through Jesus. Jesus took our sins. Jesus took our faults. Jesus took our, 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 our weaknesses. Jesus took the mess upon himself on the cross so that we might be forgiven so that we might be set free so that we might become a new creation a new creature in 
Christ Jesus. So now it's not about performance. It's not about doing. It's not about ticking off the box. But it's all has, it has to all do. It all has to do with what Jesus has accomplished at the cross. It's what he has done. Now, therefore, I can come to the Father because Jesus has forgiven me because Jesus has cleansed me because Jesus has justified me and redeemed me and, and put me right. I am in right standing with God because of Jesus and therefore I can hear from the Father. Therefore I can be in relationship with Him because I've received Jesus. Hallelujah. And so we so the enemy wants us to feel unworthy. The enemy wants to put on guilt and shame. He is the accuser. He wants to point fingers. He wants to make you feel that, like, you, like you're not good enough. Like, like uh, it's only special people that can hear from God. No, it's those who, who seek Him hear from God. Those who desire to hear from Him will hear from God. Those that, that humble themselves will hear from God. Those that diligently seek Him will hear from God. It's not about a title or a position or a place outside there. No, it's what you do in the secret room. It's what you do when you're alone with, with, with God. It's, it's you seeking Him. Jesus said, we read it earlier on, hey, I'm, I'm knocking uh, and, I'm, and I'm waiting and I'm looking to see who is the person, who is the woman, who is the man who, who, who's, who is seeking my heart. David was a man after God's own heart and therefore he would speak to David and he would lead him and he would guide him. And so, uh, you know what? We are unworthy, but because of Jesus, He positions us so that we can hear from, from Him. Hallelujah. So reason number one, the reason, first reason why we don't hear God's voice is because we're afraid to hear from Him. We're afraid of what He's going to say to us. We're just, with this fear. Okay. Number two is that we feel unworthy. All right. Number three, the third reason is some people decide they don't want to hear from God. It's a, it's a decision that they've made. They've decided that they don't want to hear from Him because some people believe that they won't be able to, to, um, to obey when He speaks. They feel that they, that they can't do what he, he wants them to do. But that's also another lie of the enemy. Every command, every instruction that God gives us is for our, our well-being. It's, 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 it's to um, uh, uh, bless us. Hallelujah. He's a good God who gives good gifts to his children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the third reason that some people don't hear his voice clearly is that they decide that they, they just don't want to hear. And therefore, if I've made that decision, then I will never position myself. I'll never uh, go um, and, and try and, and seek his face and, and hear from him. And then the fourth reason is some people don't believe that God exists or that he speaks. So reason number one is some people are afraid to hear. Reason number two, some people are unworthy. They feel unworthy. Number three, some people decide just that they don't want to hear. And number three, people don't believe that God exists or that he speaks. And, and the Bible tells the story of a king in Israel's history who faced impossible military odds. There were three armies, three mighty armies, big strong armies that were coming that they were, they were converging and they were coming together to, uh, to, to Jerusalem. And this king that was on his own, he, he was King Jehoshaphat. And look at what he did. The Bible says he went to the outer courts of the great temple in Jerusalem. And what did he do? He cried out to God. He, this is what he says. We have no might against this great company that comes against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes... Are upon thee. We don't know what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. And haven't you uh, been in a situation before where it feels like um, everyone is conspiring against you, or you feel like the, the situation that you're in, it's an impossible situation, and you just don't know what to do? Well, we need to do what Jehoshaphat did, is that they, they put their eyes on Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says then says that all Judah stood before the Lord, with their little ones, their wives and their children. In other words, they, they stood in God's presence and waited for what God was going to say. Hallelujah. When you don't know what to say, 
When you don't know what to do, you need to get into His presence, put your eyes upon, upon Him, put your eyes upon Jesus, put your eyes upon the Word, and wait for Him to speak because He is a God that wants to communicate and we have been created like that in, uh, to receive communication, to communicate. And that is from 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles 20 and verse 12 to 13. You can go read it there. If you truly want to hear from God, we have to position ourselves. We have to turn towards Him. And then what do we do? Well, we've got to express our deep desire to hear from Him. That is what we need to do. We need to ask Him to open our, our ears to hear. We need to, we need to ask Him to open our, our eyes to see and our minds to take in everything that uh, God might want to say and speak to us. Well, God speaks to us in various ways. He speaks to us. Hallelujah. He doesn't just speak to us in one way. And I want to share just a few, a few ways in which God speaks to us. God speaks through His prophets and fellow saints. Who are, so they're chosen by God, a person chosen by God, to speak a specific word as they are empowered by the Spirit to do so. So I believe we, we, uh, in the fivefold fold ministry, I believe that God still uh, speaks through prophets today. And so that's one way that God will speak to His people is through, is through the prophetic utterance. God speaks through His written word, through the, through the Bible. At times, words or phrases uh, from God's word, they seem to leap out. You know, have you experienced that before? When you're reading the word and you receive that rhema word, you receive a word that just jumps out to you, it enters your spirit, you know it's for you, for the situation you're going through. And so um, uh, those, those words, it captures our thoughts and it touches our, our, our hearts and it changes our lives. All right, so God speaks through the word. God speaks through signs and wonders, always pointing us toward the power of Jesus to save, to heal, and to deliver mankind kind god is on the move come on there is revival come on god the people are being saved people are being healed people are being uh, set free from demonic oppression people are people are broke the broken hearted are being set free the the spirit of god is moving and god speaks through those signs and and wonders praise god god speaks through the glories of the natural world the heavens and the earth both are filled with declarations of His power and His glory that compel us to give all praise to, to God the, the Father. So when we just look at nature, we see God's hand in nature. And uh, you know, when you, when you look at some of the characters, some of the men and women of, of God in the Bible, many times they went out into the wilderness to pray. Jesus went out. In the garden, he went outside. Uh, they went up on to mountains. They went into caves. They went into valleys to to hear God, to seek God. They were out in nature. Come on, God revealed Himself to Moses in a burning bush. So the, when we just look at at nature and the natural world, God God speaks in that. God speaks through visions and dreams, uh, very often giving highly specific information about what to do, uh, when to act, what to say, and where to go. Hallelujah. God speaks through angels, the Bible says, who come as messengers sent by heaven to help us, uh, to guide us, to guard us, and inform us. God speaks through impressions, impressions and images that become engraved on human hearts and minds so that we, can, so that we cannot forget who God is and what He desires for us. And He speaks to us in words that fully occupy all of our being so that there seems to be no voice and no sound other than the voice speaking within us. So there, God, God speaks to us in the inner, inner man. He speaks to us. We have a spirit. Hallelujah. And God speaks to our spirit. And you know what? I've encountered Christians over the years and even, even devout men and, and, and women who have told who have said very openly and candidly that, that they believe that God only speaks through his written word. And I tend to disagree with that. They believe that uh, every person ever needs to hear from God can be heard through the silent mental process 
of reading words on a page. Yes, God speaks to, to us that way, but it's not the only way. And so my response to, to question them is, is that the only way God speaks or is that the only way you are willing to hear him? Praise God. God speaks in your inner man. And I want to give you the example of uh, a man named uh, Elijah. And Elijah was a, was a great man of God and he accomplished great things. He did many, many uh, miracles. And uh, what happened was is uh, he had just uh, done a great miracle and there this, he killed the, 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 the evil prophets and Je Jezebel uh, heard about him killing these prophets and then he, uh, he said, I'm, uh, I'm going to kill you, man of God, I'm coming after you. And he, he, run, he decides to, to run away into a cave. And look what happens when he was in, in the cave. God speaks to him. God communicates with, with the prophet. He said, behold, the Lord passed by and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. Hallelujah. God spoke to him in a still small voice. And, and that is really uh, where God will speak to us is in our spirit in our spirit man and we need to uh be the the, the man and the woman of god who will seek him and who will run to him and, and open up our hearts uh to hear him speak praise god well church i pray that this has blessed you today and uh, we'll continue with part three next week and uh, i don't know about you but i'm i'm learning so much um uh, through my studies and before i go i want to pray for you uh, uh, but before I pray, I'd like to just share this scripture with you from Psalm 139. Psalm 139 and verse 5, it says, it's, uh, David is the psalmist. David wrote the psalm and he's, he's talking to God and he says, You put yourself behind and before me and keep your hand on me. Hallelujah. God says that I am behind you. I am before you and my hand is upon you. And I want you to just picture that. Picture the hand of God upon your life. And you might be going through some challenges and struggles. You might be between a rock and a hard place. And you might not know what to do, just like Jehoshaphat. You, didn't, you don't know what to do, but we need to get into his presence. We need to run to him and set our eyes upon him and uh, then he will tell you what to do and so david says you put yourself behind me and before you and even though you go through uh, uh, you're going through some issues and and challenges god is in front of you god is behind you and his hand his mighty hand is upon your life and look at verse 9 if i take the wings of the morning and dwell at the end of the sea even there you shall guide me. God will guide me. Your hand shall guide me. And I want to tell you today that God's hand is upon your life and God's hand is guiding you. Further on it says, and your right hand shall take a hold of me. Hallelujah. God, the Bible says that God's right hand will take a hold of you. And I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you and tell you that God's hand is on you. God's hand will, will guide you. God's hand will take you and will lead you in the path that he has for your life. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for all that are, that are listening today. I pray the blood of Jesus over their lives. I thank you that your hand is upon them. Your hand is upon their bodies. Your hand is upon their finances. Your hand is upon their marriage. Your hand is upon their children. The mighty hand of God is upon our careers, our ministries, our future, our lives. Thank you, Lord, that your hand takes us, guides us, and leads us into your perfect will. I pray life over each and every one today. I pray breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Well, church, God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. Make sure you get to Pastor Deal's uh, 
uh, weekly uh, messages, powerful messages. Make sure you connect and I will see you next week. God bless you. Bye-bye for now.